One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the. All right. I think that we'll kind of Black. get started in the chart review. Um, so this one was a large cap. I was kind of hoping that Joe would be on because Joe kind of explains all this stuff. But I guess this guy went, um, he had his lines at 44, 43. Um, took a small amount of two calls. This one was more for Joe. Like, maybe Sorry, I, I can, uh, I can handle this one. Yeah. yeah let's see. So um, lines at 144. Okay, see that that's the dashed orange line. Orange line is 143. Okay. Um, it hit my first line at 144. I put a small amount of two calls. It then went up to the day's high, and I took one dollar on half and let the other contract work. I had a pot in my head. No, if I cover at break even, Apple just hovered around then started to drop. So I covered the other contract for a small loss, but overall a green trade. Okay. Um, and this was on January 25th. Okay. So that was oh, Monday. Yeah. So this was, um, yeah. So you entered on 144 long, um, which is, I believe that upper orange line there. Yeah. That kind of VWAP um, area. Yeah. So the thing is, this isn't really an orb, right? Because in it just went up too fast because an orb is actually a tight range. So it's a very tight range where it's going up and down for a few minutes and then it breaks out of that range. So you can see there, there was a pre-market range, but you need a few minutes of after the open for it to continue to work on that range. And then you get the break of the range as well as the pre-market high and that's your orb. This is more of a first bounce play. You can see it went up yeah. fast, dropped to VWAP, that's your first bounce. And then you have to, yeah, I mean, the other thing is that day was a gap up in the market and then the market uh, filled the gap. So that's what happened when it went down. Um, you know, that could have content potentially kept going off that first bounce, but the entire market sold off, I remember that morning. So that was just the market filling the gap from the gap up. Yeah. So I would say um, it's not an orb, uh, more of a first bounce play. And second, you have to be Apple trades with the market. So because the market gapped up, it's very likely it's gonna try to fill that gap at some point in the day, usually in the morning. So you gotta be really cautious going long on the gap ups. Yeah, I think this is a good first bounce because kind of like I talk about in my videos as well, now that I kind of like understand the trade and understand what's kind of going on here. Um, when you get that, that initial just rocket out of the gate, you, you know that there are going to be so many longs with FOMO and so many people who just that, when we get that, that big, um, um, you know, that big kind of like shoot up out of the gate, um, you know that the first bounce is going to be really kind of probable on that one because we're going to have so many people chasing into that secondary kind of pullback because they're like, oh, wait for a pullback, oh, wait for a pullback. <laughs> and, you know, VWAP ended up kind of being the area because from what I see, there isn't really a line, maybe one on the daily, but VWAP is kind of like that area where it's like, okay, like this is where I think it's going to bounce. So it works really well to kind of get it at VWAP and then when we don't kind of break that high and we kind of stall up there, that's a good time to kind of take it off or at least take half off like you did. Um, I think that like as the trade keeps moving along here, like the, 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 the probability of us going over highs decreases, right? Minute by minute. We, didn't, we mm -hmm. didn't get over it the first minute. We didn't get over it the second. You know, we got, we got a third. We're starting to sell off. That's a good time to kind of take that off because you know that you're not going to be as emotional, right? And so, um, you know, and, and as we kind of keep selling off, we don't bounce, we don't bounce, we don't bounce. You can tell that this is kind of trapping more longs in this situation. And then it breaks the floor, <laughs> it goes lower, it goes lower, it goes lower, and then just ends up selling off. Yep. 
So I don't know if Oliver, do you have anything to say on that one? Or Tom? Yeah, I just want to add something here. I mean, you know, you guys putting this, uh, you know, for us to review, right? But there's no entries and exits. I know that options have that uh, too, you know, on trade review, uh, which is the triangle kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, it's it's really hard for, for us to kind of go over the point that, I mean, I could pull up any chart and I say, okay, I went, you know, from this line to this line. I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty much it. Yeah. It really doesn't make any sense. So I agree. Yeah, if next time you guys want us to go over a chart or something, I mean, show us at least the entries and exits, right? I mean, so we don't have to go through all the, uh, whatever the comments here. I mean, it could take us like five to 10 minutes to figure it out. What was your entry point? What was your exit? It just right. really doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. And if but you're trading uh, options, um, mm -hmm. I think it would be better to include the chart of the underlying stock. And just if you can, you know, just take a screenshot and then your paint tool just draw where you entered and exited on the underlying chart. Yeah, uh, you know, and just my thoughts on it, you know, similar to Harry at the first bounce, I just put in what I'm entering as well. I think, uh, yeah, I, because I have to kind of pull up the chart here. So I think 142, 143, the first one, I think it bounced back right at the open at one. I think that one is good for first bounce. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Yeah, 100%. That's a classic first bounce, and a lot of people are looking for first Break that support you've done i mean really tight race and the risk reward is really good and it should work right away okay 100%. You know, it, it will not take like you know five or ten minutes yeah usually bounce you know right to that support and just rip right through back i mean with large caps the moves even you know better so yeah that's my thoughts on it that's all yeah i don't know david i don't see the spots maybe it didn't come through but no problem all good all good um, all right, this is the next one. I wanted to kind of include some longs, some shorts, um, one large cap that was the only kind of large cap that we got. Um, I guess for this one on Acor, I talk a lot about how, and like e each one of these charts has like a lesson. And if your chart didn't get included, cause we only had like 10, 10, we only had like 10, uh, I guess slots to really kind of choose from. If your if your chart didn't get included, you know, um, next week, you know, maybe take a look at submitting it a little bit earlier or, um, you know, maybe it, that chart like didn't have a lesson. I love going over some wins and also some losses as well, because we can learn from both. Um, but this one on a core, I talk a lot about how VWAP is a great resistance, um, and not really a great support, but in pre-market in a scenario like this, um, VWAP is actually a really, really good kind of support area because we kind of gap up. Um, and it's similar to, to, to this one as well, where we, we just shoot straight up. There's not really a place to go long on it. So VWAP is kind of that area. We get a lot of buyers there. We're in the pre-market. So we know that VWAP is gonna be a, a little bit better support. And um, that is kind of just what happened with this one. Good kind of entry and good kind of exit. And then he actually went back and used this as a, as a kind of a support, which I, I like. So I don't know if anyone has any um, anything to say on this one as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, the chart looks good. Uh, you know, 630, that's a perfect entry that, you know, if you're long bias, you have to long at the support, right? I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with that breakout, but a lot of times, you know, I try to push that and just stuff right back. So, you know, it's really depends on your your edge or whatever you feel comfortable with. But, you know, if I'm long bias, I always want to long and the support instead of trying to maybe anticipate and try to, you know, go along with the high here. Because a lot of times, you know, I've seen that so many times, you just went straight up there, push a little bit and stuff right back, maybe the whole candle and, you know, just, and then, uh, yeah, you, you don't want to be, you know, kind of stuck into that uh, situation. So, so. But uh, the other one, entry 636, I think that's, that's pretty good. All right, awesome. Oron, anything? Or you want to just keep moving along? All right. 
Yeah, not, not much for me here. You guys covered it well. Thanks, bro. Um, yeah, this is another one that I kind of wanted to touch on about. Um, yeah. This one, I think, like, um, you know, like, if you have a line at 8.7, you got to be shorting into 8.7, right? You can't just be making stuff up stuff up on the mm. fly here like oh i'm gonna short a pop gonna short a pop and then it finally gets to your line and you don't end up getting hit right um yeah but that's kind of my uh personal uh you know thoughts on this one yeah for me this is like on short side right i mean this is the perfect setup uh you know when uh, in the pre-market to all the way to nine and look how you know you can determine the top is set basically Start trying to move to nine, right? But then there is support, and you know, I, I think exactly where he drew that 8.7 when that you know broke, and then he just shorted back the bounce, right? So, I mean, you know, that's perfect trade. But now let's talk about, I mean, you know, there's two scenarios either you're gonna scalp it, right, or you're gonna try to, to you know, add to your winner and hold it a little bit like longer. It really depends, you know, on what your edge or what your strategy might be. But in this case, I think, you know, you start went all the way from seven to nine, right? So technically there's at least like one and a half or like two bucks, like the mid lap. So if you were about to short, you know, towards that bounce, towards that 8.7, I mean, I think he did there 8.6. And then when it kind of stopped, he tried to add, but it then, you know, it went against him, <clears throat> right? So I'm not sure what was the risk there. And I think the average, he got like 8.5. So at that point, it was down 20 cents. But then when it started kind of drop to that 8.4, I think you just want to get out. So, you know, I'm not sure what was your plan, but if I were you, I would definitely, you know, either I'm going to hold it longer, right? Or, uh, it's more like, uh, you know, I, I will not be covering into that 8.3 because that wasn't my plan if I, I was trading this. Because if you wanted to cover at 8.3, you should have done it already if it was a scalping trade. But, uh, you know, instead, you, you try to add more size, but then it went up against you. And then when, you know, it's kind of slightly going back down, you, I think you're just being nervous and you just want to get out. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. Half or all position right and then it went down further and then you know the second trade i think this is more like a straightforward i mean you had a plan to short it near that view app and then it's just covering into that support i mean the second trade was good but the first one it's more like you know i don't know it's a uh, uh i mean if you're trying to add that you should have a clear risk right you shouldn't let it bounce all the way back to 870 or like whatever 880 yeah. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your weekend, everyone. Yeah, 100%. See you. Have a good weekend, guys. Take care, guys. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.